Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video has been a highly requested one on a very frequently asked question. And if you couldn't tell from the title already, it's gonna be all about fake lashes today. I get a lot of questions on what my favorite lashes are, how to find the right lashes, which one's best for monolids, small eyes, hooded eyes, Asian eyes, a lot of questions. So I'm going to be answering those today to the best of my ability and as extensively as I can so that I can cover all of the basics for you. This video is probably right for you if you have an eye shape like mine and you're looking for some makeup help. I consider myself to have monolids. Even if you don't have an eye shape like mine and you're just looking for some tips on lashes and the 411 on them, then this video is probably right for you too. Y'all, I have my notes. I'm gonna be referring to this notebook because I wrote down all the questions that you sent in. I have all my responses right here, so don't mind me if I look down from time to time. The first thing I wanna cover is how to find the lashes that are right for you. And ultimately, it's all about trial and error. You kinda just have to buy it try it and see how you like it but there are some things you can think about or take into consideration when you're looking for the right eyelash so one of those things is the makeup look that you're going for are you looking for lashes for a dramatic makeup look or a natural makeup look or maybe even something in between because if you're doing a more dramatic bold makeup look then you can go for more dramatic lashes that are fuller fluffier bolder and if you're doing a more natural minimal makeup look you'll probably want lashes that are thinner not so full and fluffy but still natural and wispy looking the second thing to keep in mind is the band size the band is you know that strip that the the lashes sit on so some bands are really thin and some are much thicker and there are a lot of variables that go into which band is best for what so thinner bands are much easier to work with in my opinion they just sit more comfortably on my eyes they don't feel as heavy and I think that might be because I have monolids a lot of my lid goes over the band so if it's a thicker band it's more obvious to me that they're there and it's just a little bit uncomfortable. I find that a thinner band also gives you more flexibility, like it's easier to apply, but some bands are also very thin where it makes it very difficult to apply. But thicker bands are also really nice because if you don't want to apply liner, then the thicker band can already act as your liner. I'm sure some people find thicker bands a lot easier to apply. It just really depends. So that's something that you can think about if you're shopping for lashes and you, you're not sure which one to buy, maybe try both and see if you like the thinner band more or the thicker band more. And I'll also go into some brands that I like later on. Along with that, the flexibility of the lashes can be a factor to consider also. When an eyelash comes in the box, you see that it already has a curved molding to it. Maybe your eyes are much more circular or much more flatter. Um, so if that's the case, you might want a band that's more flexible or an eyelash that's more flexible that you can like bend and twist very easily so that you can match it to your eye shape. So if the lashes are too stiff, you might have some trouble kind of fitting it to your eye. I'm just gonna talk about some brands that I like really quickly that I've tried. And disclaimer, I'm not an eyelash expert whatsoever. I've just been wearing lashes for some time now and somehow it makes me credible in this space. So here I am. The first one is Daiso lashes. So when I was first getting into makeup like years and years ago and I didn't really have a lot of money, um, I just went to Daiso and bought lashes for like a dollar. And these were great at the time for practice because they were cheap. If I messed up, I wasn't too worried about it. It was fine. The thing with the Daiso brands is that you can tell that it's not as natural looking as other lash brands. And I do find that the material that it's made out of is a little bit thicker. It just feels plasticky. But if you're looking for something that's affordable to practice makeup on, I would highly suggest, you know, going to your local Daiso and looking for these lashes. They have a bunch there, a lot of different styles, a lot of different kinds. They even have lashes um, that have glitter 
on them and I thought those were really cute so I definitely used a lot of Daiso lashes back in my day. I'm gonna start with the most affordable ones and then work my way up. So second, um, it's kind of like my favorite brand. I usually just tend to gravitate towards Ardell. So I love the Ardell Wispies. I love their Demi Wispies. I used to use their 110 eyelashes too, but I just prefer the Wispies now. It's what I'm wearing currently. And these have a very flexible band. It's a super thin band. And I find that the lashes have a really pretty natural shape. If you have really big round eyes, these might not look as dramatic on you as they do on me or someone else with smaller eyes. Ardell Wispies, it's kind of like my go-to. They're just really easy to just pop up and, and go. It's just so automatic for me now. The next brand, Kiss Lashes. I know this, this is empty. I totally forgot to buy a new box to share with you. Um, Kiss Lashes, I find are really natural, really pretty. They're great for natural looks. These have a super thin band. They're even thinner than the Ardell Wispies, and I actually find these to be very difficult to apply because it is so what's the word malleable this is in shy I like to wear these when I don't want to put eyeshadow on but I still want to wear lashes so I think these are the most natural looking lashes that you can pull off without having eye makeup on but again lashes makeup it's all subjective so that's just my opinion next I have some Lashes from Petite Cosmetics. This is a brand created by also another YouTuber, Tina Young. Um, I love her videos. But she came out with a set of lashes called Petite Cosmetics. These are the Lux Faux Mink Lashes, which I actually prefer over her other collection or like her initial regular collection. I like these a lot more. The band on this is thicker than the other ones I've talked about and they're pretty easy to apply. They are pretty dramatic in my opinion. So I wear these when I have a full on bold makeup look and I need my lashes to just pop and stick out there. And I believe Tina Young made these lashes for people with different eye shapes or smaller eye shapes, but do not quote me on that. I'll be honest, I haven't played with these lashes as much as I would have liked to, so I don't have a lot to say. I'm, I've tried maybe two or three of her lashes. They're just a little bit heavier, so I don't tend to gravitate towards them that often. Next, I have some lashes from Velour. Velour has a mini collection, so the lashes are smaller than the ones they usually sell, and these are for people with smaller eyes. Um, Velour has really nice lashes. They're super soft, and um, the band is pretty thick. Um, I also don't wear these that often. I surprisingly find them to not be as dramatic as I would like um, and because they are smaller and shorter in width they don't really fit on my eye the way that I would like but if you have a smaller eye shape then definitely consider this and try it out because I do love the quality of their lashes. Sephora collection also has a set of lashes that are very similar to the velour ones. I find the quality between those two to be pretty comparable. They just remind me a lot of each other. The last set of lashes I have to share are from Huda Beauty. These are kind of the most dramatic lashes that I know and own and have heard of. If you're going for a really bold look, I would highly recommend Huda Beauty, but these are very heavy. They are something that you have to get used to. I had to get used to it. And I have worn her lashes when I'm wearing a super colorful, bold look, but I have never worn them for more than maybe like five hours or something because they are really heavy on my eyes and I just can't, it's just a lot. But if you have really large eyes, um, and maybe not monolids, these might be the lashes for you because you have more lid space where your lid doesn't fold over it, if that makes sense. So these might be good for you. They are really pretty and um, I do love these. I just have to be very selective of when I'm wearing them. Those are the lashes that I have tried so far and have opinions on. Now we can move on to how to apply the lash onto your eyelids. I prefer to use tweezers to lift the lash off of the plastic packaging because there is glue behind it, keeping the lashes in place. I like to check the back of the eyelash and remove excess glue when I can because sometimes the glue is really chunky and it can affect the way the lashes apply and look on your eyes. Before that, you wanna make sure that the lash is the right size, right width for your eye shape. And how I've done that in the past is before I remove the glue, I'll take the eyelash and just set it on 
on my eyes first and then just blink a couple times to see if it pokes you or if it's long enough and then um, trim what you think you need to trim off you can use your lashes as a guide I tend to use my waterline more if you don't get it right the first time it's totally fine that it is a little bit shorter than what you would like the thing is you do not want it to be too long you could poke your eye it's not fun I've had that happen before or it just looks off it's better that it's short and then you have your natural lashes to kind of fill in any sparse areas now comes the actual gluing part so I have a few lash glues here to recommend the first glue I've ever started with is the duo lash glue this is the glue that just comes with the lash packages sometimes this worked pretty well for me this is one of their older glues as well they've definitely changed the packaging when I use glue out of a tube like this I actually would squirt it out onto some plastic thing and then take a toothpick into the glue and apply that over the lashes I found that gave me the most control with the glue I didn't end up using too much or too little it was just a lot easier than taking the lash and applying the glue right over it the other two glues I have to recommend is from Velour. I've been using this one and I've enjoyed it but I really do love the house of lashes eyelash glue both of these and I think lash glues in general work better if it's a little bit tackier when it's had time to kind of like sit and oxidize I guess it's not as slippery when the glue is tackier and you put it over your eyes it just sticks on faster and doesn't need as long of a drying time but in order to get tacky glue you just kind of have to use it and wait until it's older for it to get tacky I've also used the Sephora collection lash glue that one I didn't really like as much um, <laughs> I'm like no don't use that one for the inner corner of my eyes it just didn't hold the lash down well enough so towards the end of the day my lash on the inner corner would always just flip out because it wouldn't hold it in place with these glues I didn't really have that trouble the Sephora collection glue I'm sure it's great but for me and my eye shape it did not work that well I didn't even finish the bottle and I got another one so <laughs> these two bottles actually come with a brush and this makes it so much easier to apply the glue so i like to use as little glue as possible like a very thin but even layer over the lash band i like to hold the lash with tweezers and i'll hold it in the center of the lash and then i will start inching it closer towards my eye and make sure that it's also aligned in the center with my eyes and i'll make sure the center of the lash is down first once that's down and pretty much in place i'll go either towards the inner corner or the outer corner and lay those down next i like to put the center down first because it just again more control over the lash the weight of the lash is more evenly distributed on both sides rather like if you put it in the inner corner first you have this long lash to work with and lay down it really depends on what works for you and what you like to do how to curl your lashes that is a little bit different as well than curling your natural lashes with fake lashes they're bigger they're fuller they're kind of already curled and shaped in their own way so you kind of have to work with that you take your eyelash curler open it as wide as possible or as far apart as possible so you're giving yourself enough space start in one of the corners you're basically inserting the lash curler behind all of your falsy make sure you're getting everything so i don't like to get super close to the waterline when i curl falsies bring it forward a little bit and then lightly curl with a few what do you call this a few pinches and then i like to move up the lash you know that trick where you curl at the base you curl again in the middle and then you curl again at the end i do that but not so intensely because the lashes have already come pre-curled you don't really have to curl it as much as you would your natural lashes i don't find you have to apply as much pressure so on this eye i like to start on the outer corner you can wiggle your lash curler around to make sure you get all of the strands in there do little pinches and there you go now we're moving on to removing and cleaning your lashes so I'm gonna be honest at the end of the day when the lashes need to come off I just pull them off I know it's not the ideal way. I know we've been taught not to do that. With the Ardell lashes, which are the lashes that I wear the most often, I think the band is thin enough where it doesn't 
get to a point where it irritates my skin or I feel like I should stop doing that, it hasn't been an issue at all, even with the types of glues that I'm using. If you are using a lash with a thicker band, I would highly recommend you not do that. That will hurt. I've done that before. I've done it once. I've never done that again because that hurts. With thicker bands, I recommend using a makeup remover um, and a Q-tip to go in there and make sure you're getting the glue off very carefully before you take off the band. Um, I recommend using my cellar water um, so that you don't get oils into the lash, especially if you plan on reusing the eyelash. If you're going to reuse the lash, how do you clean it? I don't tend to use mascara on my falsies. I feel like they're pretty dramatic enough. Even if you don't use mascara, your fake lashes can still get dirty. So how I clean them is I'll take the box that it came in. I'll put it back in its little station or whatever. I'll take a Q-tip and my cellar water and just run it through the lashes. Then you can take the tweezers and remove the glue from the back of the lash. In terms of how many times you can reuse your lashes, that is up to you. I use the lash up until it looks like it's dead, <laughs> like it doesn't look cute anymore and it's all scraggly. That's how I know it's time it's time to throw it out. Okay, that was a lot of talking. I actually feel quite parched, like my throat is dry. <laughs> but that is all I have for today's video on lashes. If you have any more questions on lashes, if I missed anything, if you have other tips, please drop them down in the comments. I would love to know more. I'm sure it would help a lot of other people too. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.